Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with another special package and it's a new retro system. Well, technically it's not a, a new retro system because I do actually have a similar model in my collection. But this one's particularly special because it's the same model as the, um, the second computer I ever owned. I've already cut the wrapping on the outside so to save us some time. as the first thing is already given away we have original Spectra Video gear and this is a Spectra Video SV904 data cassette in its original box looks like our phone packaging is intact as well Right, now it is a little yellow, so we'll have to look at doing some cleaning. Okay, so here's the data cassette. Now, the Spectra Video had a fairly custom connector, like the, um, in a way, very similar to the Commodore 64's custom connector for its tape player. But other than that, I mean, it is a bit dirty. So this is a 904 model. I'll have to check which way, which whether this is the earlier one or the the second. There's two models that fit the original Spectra video, um, and it's got its um, door on the cassette bay, which is good. That's good news. So it's great to have that with its packaging. Now, what else? We're going to see some hints of some other stuff to come. We actually have some boxed versions of some of the titles. So Spectron, and the box is a little crushed. Now there's no screenshots on these. Um, I have done a gameplay of this before, but we'll probably use that as an example as long as the computer does work as it's supposed to. Ah, here we go. We have a Spect Video product catalog. So it's a flip down brochure. So there's the 318, the 328, which I still have. The um, expansion box, the mini expander. I had a printer. There's the beloved Coleco adapter. Um, an external disk drive and the tape player. And then we have the um, touch tablet, which I also have. Well, it doesn't, that looks a little different. And then we have a range of joysticks down there, including the Coleco joystick as well. There's a range of expansion cards that go in the expansion bus. And there's a little bit of a comparison chart. Actually, that's an interesting thing to have a look at. What they were spouting about in comparisons is probably what I looked at when I was... Uh, sorry, it's silver, so it's going to reflect a little bit. Um, what they were saying their machine was better than others at the time and it probably counted a lot in the decision I made that's really cool okay now we've got another copy of Flipper Slipper now that's the um, cartridge game I got recently uh, that didn't work so it will be interesting to see whether we can get that one to work the box isn't as bad as that Spectrum one it's not as good as the other copy that I have um, Gnomus, which I think is an educational numbers program. Home Economist, which is written in basic. The other launch game in box as well, Armored Assault. It's actually a really good game, but it is only, oops, cool. it is only two, two players, unfortunately. So, um, And Introduction to Basic. Once again, a little squashed. Okay, sorry about that cut. Rung by life insurance. <laughs> okay, and we have uh, non-boxed, but um, I actually haven't seen this title before. It's Juno Lander. So it's a later one. What's the number? There we go. SD306T. 
Well, that'll be interesting to have a look at. See whether, because I mean, a lot of the um, early release games, I mean, there were a couple of machine code ones and the cartridge games, which are all machine code, of course, and the rest of the titles that came out for ages were all basic ones. And they're all actually, um, uh, you know, not that flash. So I'll be interested to see whether this one's actually in machine code. And there's another one that I've never seen before, Car Ace. And the number on this one is 307T. I'll take a tease for tape. It's interesting, a racing game. It's all been nicely packaged, which is appreciated. Now I have a second data cassette. Right, yeah, this is the earlier model. So this is the 903. It's a lot heavier. It would, it would weigh double the other one. And it has, uh, there we go, it's got the, the microphone on and off switch. Um, the cable is a little exposed there. But seriously, that weighs twice as much as the other one. But it still it has its door. It's got NW1 in there, so maybe that means not working. But we shall see what we can do with it. It's actually a better colour than the other one. The other one's probably been out, out in the sun. So as you can see, they almost look identical, except for that microphone switch. And now the piece de resistance. Not only have I managed to get an original Spectre video through in 8, but I've got a boxed one. I, of course, threw out the box of my original Spectre video when I had it. Uh, space was and everything, and there's no way I can pick that up with that hand. So, there we go. Sorry, you have a nice picture of my thumb there. So, let's have a look. obviously the box is a bit tatty, but it's better than no box at all. It's been such a long time, I can't even remember what the back of the box looks like. So here's the back of the box. So the Spectre Video computers, you know, had all of these amazing peripherals and expansion options and everything like that. So it was a very well planned um, computer. Um, and the originator of a lot of the machines of this design. So. Um, just that it didn't sell as well as it probably could have. But anyway, let's open this up. What I might do is just pause while I do the opening bit. Right, so back again. So it is the original polystone, a little dirtied, but it's got Spectre Video embossed in there. Let's have a look together. And here's the beastie itself. Now, I mean, I did know this, it, no red joystick, right? Um, but it is the original um, model one, the same as I owned back in the day. So it has an external RF modulator and a, um, uh, a DIN plug and a TV switch and this original type of power supply which is exactly the same as my 3281 one over there because let's get the unit out and have a look it's actually not in too bad condition considering how old it is it's a little dirty but not too bad Flip it over the back, so we have our monitor port, the cassette port, the expansion bus. We'll flip it over on this side. We have the power socket, the on-off rocker switch, and two joystick ports. On top of it, we have the cartridge port, which on the Spectre video was not an expansion bus. That's the one major change they made between these machines and the MSX machines. They made the cartridge port into an expansion bus. Um, so they sort of they modified the expansion bus on here and made it so the game cartridges went um, in a similar form factor, but non-compatible. But it has the um, you know the graphic characters and oh, it's a chiclet keyboard, but it's actually quite a good chiclet keyboard. All right, um, let's go plug it in and give it a try. Right, well the system, the Spectre Video indeed works, um, but none of the tapes that came with it do. So those new games obviously have nice cases and tapes. I'll have to see if I can uh, download some wave images and try them on extra tapes to start with, and if they work, tape them over the originals. So I've got original working. Now the um, the tape players. I haven't tried the really old one with the 
the wonky cord but the complete 904 with the closed door uh, I've cleaned and seems to work fine so what I thought we'd do is um, try some of my games so um, and I thought I mean I've showed my machine code ones before let's try some of my basic ones right now so load a game we use the C load command we we'll use the keyboard shortcut just play on tape now in difference to um, other computers at the time the Spect Video's um, tape loading speed is actually quite quick um, so I mean this is obviously an all basic program I don't think there's any machine code in this one from memory I'm not 100% sure which one this is so this is sort of a random pick won't take too long to load because the original tape well there we go it's loaded so right sorry about that where were we um, uh, we're going out to tea Indian um, uh, a night without most of the children so I'll just list this right ah uh, no when I did my releases, uh, there's a little trick you can do so that people can't actually look at the listing. So there's a little point doing that. So let's run. Um, now this particular tape is when my um, software was being distributed by the guy that took the magazine over from me. So this is Galactic Assault. So rather than I be over there on the keyboard, I've just plugged in a normal joystick. So this is all written entirely in basic and dealing with the um, only allowed to have four sprites in a row. So fairly basic stuff, but they are, you know, shooting at me. Oops, missed. <laughs> and a little jerk in things. All right. So just a quick demonstration there. Let's try it. Right, next we have Sub Hunt. So the delay at the start is usually the um, uh, loading up the sprites from basic into the video memory. Right, so I'm moving the ship at the top. They're firing missiles. I've got to do, I've got to press in a direction and then drop a depth charge. Oops. Got me. Now, obviously, I've um, in this particular game, one of the reasons why I showed it um, is that I'm using multiple sprites um, to get more colours. Obviously we are having a little bit, I do, wasn't totally into sprite ordering. Um, and so we're using two sprites for each of the subs, one for the sub and another one for the score that you get when you hit that scar. And each sub is probably two, two sprites wide as well. That's when your missile goes past, and there's a second one there where, where you know, it's disappearing. This is a fun little game, you know, and even animated the, um, the depth charges so they rotate as they fall down. It's a simple little thing, and this is, and there we go, this one, we're getting there getting faster now. shows what you can do with a little bit of basic. Alright, let's try another one. I'll see if I can find a platform game. Now here we go with another one. Um, and I thought I was going to do a platform, but I thought I saw this one on the same tape as the other one. Um, and I thought I'd show it. So this is basic with a little bit of machine code uh, or an in, uh, what's called an interrupt driven uh, sprite movement handler. Which I'm not even 100% sure whether it's machine code. I'll have to get it out and check. So you get a whole lot of sprites being moved in a constant basis. So basically it's chicken, you can move left and right, but you've got to 
get across the road without getting squashed. Obviously I got a lot of my inspiration from my games from Atari 2600 games. There was indeed an, and a lot of Activision games because they were my favourite. And it just shows what you can do with, um, you know, sprites and the uh, powerful basic language that came with these machines. Oops. This joystick's not responding. Ooh, just made it. Let's see if we can make it across one more time. I'm stuck. Okay, it's getting faster still. Going up. Well, there we go. All right, let's try one more. Right, so here we go with one of my later title, basic titles, Gold Rush. Uh, no, we don't need to read the instructions. Um, it's once again written in basic. Let's start the game. So this was obviously in a phase when I was into Manic Miner and wanted one for my own computer. So we have our little man here, and you need to time the jumps, avoiding the poisonous grasses. Oops, no, you can't make it up there. No, no it fell too far. So you've got a mixture of moving objects and animate objects and destructible parts of the screen. No. I oh, will work this out. That's it. <laughs> so just like many Viner, it was which it was modelled on. You basically had to work out how to get to each one of the one of the things. I'm still not sure how you get that gold bar down there, but let's go along here. Oops. And I've missed time that. And I think I've got about 20 levels in there, and they're all as infuriating hard as this one. Alright, let's try another one. Okay, here we go with another, another titles. This one's called Lunar Rescue. So, under my earlier working title, which is Unisoft. Okay. Um, right, so it was based on an obscure arcade game that I used to play back in the day. Um, called Lunar Rescue, I believe. Um, the basic idea is you start on the ship up the top and you need to drop down. You can slow yourself down by pressing thrust. And then on the way up, you can shoot asteroids. Uh, you can't speed up when you're ascending, though. There we go. Uh, we'll just wait for ourselves to come back a little bit. So we've got four astronauts to rescue from the surface of the planet. Oops. I'll just wait till we get past this asteroid this time. So it doesn't matter how hard you land, uh, <clears throat> but obviously running into an asteroid is not a good thing. So if you look carefully, you can just see a slight tear in the command module up the top there, which means it's made out of two sprites sitting next to each other. Because obviously we're in uh, written in basic, so we can only move the items every so often. There's a bit of tolerance in the docking part there. You notice how it limited, Whew. 
it limited um, oh, by the way if you're carrying an asteroid and you get killed uh, you lose that astronaut so I finished level by dying now it's a little faster and as you can see new asteroids do appear and it's quite a fun little game this is a game that I've often thought of writing a um, machine code version with um, you know and uh, use a few more sprite layers and some variation in the asteroids as well just because it's quite a fun close little game to play there we go, let's see if I can make one more up there there we go <coughs> so I can put this level without dying and then we'll leave it at that Three and we get a bit faster still so there we go there's a bit of a look at some of my early basic games and a look at the original machine uh, that I I mean obviously not the original one I wrote them on but the same model as the one I wrote them on but on obviously the only um, bit we've got the box and everything like that we're only missing the little red joystick on the right hand side um, but the unit works really well <coughs> um, we'll probably go into storage because I don't have enough room to keep it out display and don't want to get dirty and it is obviously one of the rarest machines I have um, but I know it works so I'll get it out and check it occasionally and the 328's um, better to keep out because uh, it's got more memory and everything like that for my testing um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this overview of probably what, what I considered my prime computer growing up uh, where I learned that I learned how to program on and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for all my subscribers, and I'll catch you all later.